Today's video, we're going to ask the question, can we build a competent DOS computer without using any expansion cards? We review old technology from games to old PCs and don't forget the doll. We don't lose all get ancient electronics. We cover it all. So before we get into the main topic of today's video, uh, I've noticed my last couple videos have seen a bit of a spike in viewing. So apparently the algorithm, for whatever reason, has uh, snatched up my videos and uh, they've been getting quite a bit of views compared to what uh, I usually get. So just to give you guys a comparison, for this small channel, a good video, if I put a video out and I get a thousand views in three or four months for my channel, that's considered really good. <laughs> the last couple videos I've done, um, I've maybe I've gotten 2,000 plus views in one day. So kind of weird for my my uh, my channel. It's been a, a big increase. I'm kind of happy about it. But with that has also come an increase in subscribers. Um, not huge, but it, it is there. And this is basically for them. And I just want to tell you, uh, new subscribers, first off, thank you for subscribing. I hope you enjoy this content and future content. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, please check out some of my older content. I have, I've been doing this for about five plus years. Uh, I, I, I think I have over 200 videos now. And a lot of those old videos have gotten lost in the shuffle. If you hear that, that's my dog uh, sneezing over there. <laughs> hear that sneezing. Um, but anyways, uh, I've been trying to redo a lot of my older videos. Kind of like doing, uh, taking a second look type videos. But there's still a lot of older and even not that old videos that are kind of get lost in the shuffle. And I think there's, they've got some really cool and interesting content. So I've got videos on like the BP6 and these cool like NVIDIA uh, 3D glasses. And... Uh, and we talk about stuff like the, the Cirrus Logic Eagle 2 chipset. I know that seems kind of dry, but it's kind of a really cool uh, vintage VGA card. And even stuff from further back. So, if you're a new subscriber, even if you're not a new subscriber, uh, I encourage you to just take a look at the back catalog uh, when you have some time. Because uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, I've got a lot in my back catalog. So, and uh, I do understand some of the older videos, the production quality is... Well, my channel isn't known for its production quality, but I know that those old, old videos uh, can look and sound and just are overall worse. Um, I get it, but uh, give them a chance. Um, you still might enjoy the content. All right, moving on to today's video. Okay, so you might be wondering what the heck is today's video all about? Well, first of all, this is just kind of a fun uh, side project I wanted to do, and it concerns this motherboard right here, and in a moment we're going to take a much closer look at this motherboard. But um, I recently acquired this motherboard in a small lot I picked up, and um, it just really interested me. Oh, there you go. And it just really interested me. Buddy, you're in the way. Anyways, I found this motherboard to be quite interesting. Um, so I wanted to do a video about it. So after acquiring this board, I kind of did my usual shrug and ah, another Socket 7 motherboard. After looking this board over though, it had a couple uh, really cool qualities that I thought were very interesting. And it kind of gave me this idea, could I actually make sort of a decent, competent, jack-of-all-trades DOS computer using this motherboard? without adding any expansion card. So no sound card, no video card, no SCSI card, no hard drive controller, nothing like that. It, 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 it sounds kind of pointless, I, I understand, but it's just one of those things I just want to do it to see, just to do it. To be honest, picking out like a discrete sound and video card, that's one of my favorite parts about building a vintage computer. I love, you know, looking at the, the pluses and minuses, pros and cons, picking out, uh, you know, hand-picking the perfect video and sound card for the specific build I'm doing for whatever project, but I thought I did to do the opposite with this one, because um, I feel like this board might have everything we need on it already for a really good DOS machine. And I'm sure there's many other boards out there that have the similar qualities, but this is what I have, and I thought it would be, it would make an interesting video. So, uh, if you find that interesting, come along with me, and we're going to build a Socket 7 DOS machine. 
All right, so let's take a look at this motherboard here. And I just like this motherboard. I think it's great for DOS uh, right out of the box. Uh, so if we look, so right here we have the model number. It's E139761. That's pretty much all I get. Uh, from it. Uh, I think this might be like an OEM board or like an Intel kind of OEM board. Um, but that's fine. Uh, no problems there. Uh, no AGP. It's just uh, PCI and then 316-bit ISA. Although there are some interesting uh, like solder points uh, here and here. I would almost think maybe that was AGP but it's, it's much too far up I believe. Um, so I don't know, maybe it was for a coast module on a certain um, revisions of the board, maybe. Uh, right here, I believe that is the L2 cache. I think, I have fired this board up once. I think it is 512 of uh, K of L2 cache. Right here we have the HX chipset from Intel. I believe that is the Triton 2 chipset. So pretty nice chipset. Uh, CPU... Uh, socket 7. I believe this board supports everything from the 75 megahertz up to the 200 megahertz uh, CPU. Uh, right here it's silk screen. You have like the different settings. So the highest for front and side bus we have here is 66 megahertz and the multiplier of 3 is the highest uh, at least that the silk screen shows. So that would be 200 megahertz. Um, I think <laughs> I want to say it's an MMX, so I believe there's a voltage regulator on here that it allows split voltage, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I remember when I fired it up, for some reason in my memory, I'm thinking it was an MMX, but maybe not. We'll see uh, once I fire it up again. But a lot of choice here. You can throw in a 75 megahertz uh, Pentium if you want something a little more old-timey, uh, something that might mimic like a really high-end 486. Uh, something more reasonable, 133 or 166 megahertz Pentium. Those are classic Pentiums. Uh, great kind of jack of all trade uh, CPUs for DOS. Yes, even with the 75 megahertz Pentium, you're going to have games that run too fast. DOS just covers too wide of a spectrum. So, you know, the farther back you go into like the 80s, you're going to have games running too fast. Even in the 90s, you're going to have some games running too fast. But in my personal experience, I found the vast, I don't know majority, but bulk of DOS titles run just fine on the on the earlier Pentium. So, uh, Pentium 75 all the way up to 200, 233 megahertz. I've had very few games, uh, at least from the 90s, that have speed issues. Of course, you have your Wing Commanders and uh, games like that that are known to have speed issues, but I, I think overall you're fine with a Socket 7 Pentium as a nice jack-of-all-trades. And, and it also allows you to uh, do some early Windows stuff, which I might throw Windows on here, Windows 95, and um, you know some of those late DOS games that helps you play them uh, pretty competently. So right here we have this little doggle here, there's a serial connection, PS2 for your mouse and keyboard, uh, USB, although that's not much use to us in DOS, parallel port, serial port, built-in VGA, and then built-in sound, and we'll get to that in a minute. As far as memory goes, oh, I don't recall how much is installed right now, but it uses 72-pin memory. I think... I'm going to put 64 megabytes in here. That's about the highest amount of RAM I recommend if you're going real heavy on DOS. Any more than that, and it can trip up a couple games and um, you know make them throw errors and not act right. Uh, you'd be fine with 32 and even 16, but since we already got a Pentium on here, we're going to go with uh, 32 megabytes. Or sorry, we're going to go with 64 megabytes. I think we should be just fine. Uh, Built-in floppy. Uh, an IDE connector, so four IDE devices, very nice. And um, yeah, okay, so overall, that's the overall package. And right there, I think that makes a decent uh, motherboard for DOS. Uh, but the two big things are video and sound. Uh, so that's the thing with this board. I think the built-in video and sound are pretty much ideal for DOS. So first, let's look at the built-in video. So if we look right here, you may have already seen it earlier when we were going over the board, but here is our built-in video chip, and we have a Verge DX. So this is a slightly later revision of the infamous uh, Verge 3D Accelerator chip. Um, so these chips are known to not be that great in 
uh, 3D acceleration, uh, even the slightly faster uh, DX revision. But in 2D DOS, I think these are great. They have a really excellent 2D core, excellent game compatibility. Uh, usually these S3 chips are kind of the reference standard for 2D and DOS. Uh, I believe the RAM is right here. I, I want to say it's got the full 4 megabytes. It might be 2, but I think it's got the full 4 megabytes. Um, it has a video feature connector here, although you probably will never be using that, but uh, yeah, this is an, I think this is an excellent chip for DOS. Uh, it's plenty fast and super compatible for 2D, and it even has the S3D uh, API, so it even lets you place a few of those DOS titles that actually use S3D for 3D acceleration, and it's, it's okay for uh, Windows, at least it gives you some kind of 3D acceleration ability, but since our focus is really MS-DOS, uh, this chip, I, I, it's just excellent for DOS, just compatibility, and like I said, it's, it's fast enough. It's just a good chip for 2D and DOS. Now, there might be some issues. Sometimes with these chips, there's issues with some of the black levels, um, but to me, I don't know. That, that doesn't really seem, it's not really a deal breaker, um, and depending on the chip, it, you might not even have that issue. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if it affects the Verge DXs. Uh, it might just affect, like, the Trio uh, chips, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But overall, I still definitely recommend these, uh, at least for 2D DOS. So that's built in right out of the box. You don't even have to install a video card. You're already set for video. So let's look what this board has in store for us for sound. So for the sound chips, we have to look over here and we have two sound chips. So first, let's take a look at this one right here. And it's a little hard to see, even when you have light on it, but it is a Yamaha a Real OPL3 chip. Uh, it is the YMF701B-S, uh, so that does have a real uh, Yamaha FM, so you're set for all your uh, DOS games that use FM synth. And then we also have a chip that goes with it, which I found really interesting, and that's this guy right here. Let me flip things around. And right here, this chip that goes along with it, this is also a Yamaha chip. This is a YMF704S, and it is a general MIDI uh, chip. So this looks like it is just a uh, Yamaha chip with general MIDI capabilities. So uh, right out of the bat with this board, we should be able to get uh, general MIDI off this chip. So I've been looking online, and I've seen some comments about the this particular uh, implementation of general MIDI. And there's a couple people that say it sounds horrible, and there's a couple people that say it sounds great. So hopefully we can get it running, and then we can judge for ourselves uh, about that. So yeah, it is not the XG, so it's not Yamaha's later XG General MIDI standard, where they've uh, added some features and sounds and things like that. Um, I don't know the technical things, but I know they did add things to the General MIDI standard, and they called it uh, XG. Uh, yeah, this, but this is... It looks like this is before that. I don't see anything special, just Yamaha General MIDI. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So that's why I think this board is really good for DOS. Because right off the bat, uh, you have excellent uh, video and potentially sound. Uh, so you don't have to add any kind of sound card if you don't want to. You don't really have to add video card if you don't want to. Of course, you could. Of course, you could add... Uh, you know, a better sound card. Of course, you could add like a, a Voodoo to go along with the built-in video, or just throw in whatever. You can there. You get a wide variety of choices with PCI. But so for the purpose of this video and just for fun, we're gonna put together this build, and we're not gonna use any expansion cards. We're just gonna use uh, what this board gives us, which seems like a pretty good package for DOS. So getting this computer uh, up and running was pretty much a breeze. Uh, for once, I really didn't have any uh, problems with the computer itself. Um, I wanted to take a quick look at the BIOS, which I actually thought was very interesting. It's very simple BIOS, um, very to the point, but it works. I should mention I didn't update this BIOS or anything like that. There's probably a later revision of it. But right here under Advanced, just a few options here. Uh, one that caught my eye was the audio, so right from the BIOS you can go into the audio and if you need to adjust things like the RRQ and DMA and like port address and stuff uh, for those onboard Yamaha chips, uh, you can do that very, very easily through the BIOS. So yeah, this was a very simple BIOS, but I really liked it. It was very to the point and uh, easy to use and it seemed like all the uh, 
the main things were there. Of course, you can't do like a lot of like tweaking and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of options for that, but uh, I, I don't know. It's simple to the point. I kind of liked it. So the only real benchmark I did here, I just did a quick benchmark of Quake, uh, and it did like 47 FPS. Uh, not bad. Uh, we've seen similar machines in the past with with these benchmarks and stuff and, and the S3 cards, so I don't didn't feel like I needed to run a lot of benchmarks. I thought the focus of this video really should be on the sound. Um, so we're going to look at a couple games. I have turned off the like digital sound effects, which by the way sound fine, no problems there. Um, so I just have the general MIDI playing, so I've set these games to play music through general MIDI. Uh, with the digital effects muted so we can get a feel on how the uh, that general MIDI from that Yamaha chip sounds
I don't think you should drink that. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could take on the world. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacles mutated into an insane genius, and Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. <laughs> Malcolm the Jester is broken free. He now controls the Chirogen, source of all the magic in Chirandia. Once a favorite of the court, he killed the king and seized the gem. Imprisoned by the royal mystics, Malcolm was held for 18 years. But now, the mystic spell has slipped, and vengeful Malcolm enjoys free reign. <laughs> you dare trip me? But no. Something special for you, a humorous hex. But I shall give fair warning, don't jump on that tree. Boo! Tis funnier that way, is it not? And for our final test here, I wanted to play uh, an S3D game um, with The Verge, uh, you know, special API. And um, these chips also, the sound chips also support uh, Microsoft... Uh, direct sound or Microsoft sound system uh, by the way which we're going to use here uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to get a direct capture of this game because um, my capture for whatever reason I have to figure it out yet but my capturing device which usually works fine has all of a sudden uh, decided to not capture anything except like bog standard DOS resolutions and DOS so any windows uh, when I try to run up windows it just it fails to capture it I just get an error um, so it's not capturing anything from Windows or higher resolutions, and uh, also it wouldn't capture the uh, direct or S3D footage of Whiplash because I don't. It's it's different. It's like a non-standard or different uh, higher DOS resolution that for some reason right now is just tripping up my capture setup. Um, pfft, no idea why it happened. Just randomly stopped working right. So, anyways. Uh, I did take some footage of the screen from the camera, so not as good as direct capture, but uh, it is something. It did run and sound fine. Uh, it was just my capture device. Drivers ready! Engines ready! Go! my project for putting together a computer without using any uh, expansion cards. Uh, is it really practical or is there even a point to it? Not really. I mean, unless you just don't have expansion cards. Um, there's not really a point to it. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, personally I love picking out a different video and sound cards when I'm making a retro build. But it was just a little stupid fun challenge. Um, I wanted to try because I had the board. Um, I, I mean, the only thing I could think of maybe is if you had some kind of like pizza box style, uh, very slim line, uh, like ATX compatible case that had no room for expansion like slots or boards. And then if you could somehow, you know, like put that motherboard in there and then you'd have that motherboard in like a pizza box case uh, type PC case, like some of those old Macintoshes. 
uh, and things like that, and then you wouldn't have to worry about any expansion cards, and you'd have a pretty competent uh, computer. But other than that, there's not really a point um, other than just a fun little project. Um, and it worked out well. I, I thought this board was very competent uh, as far as MS-DOS goes. So as for the uh, FM chip built on there, of course the FM synth I thought was, was fine. Um, I mean, it is an actual Yamaha uh, OPL chip, so of course that was going to sound fine. Um, as for what you thought of the general MIDI chip, um, you know, there was a couple games where I was like, that sounds not too bad. And there was a couple others where it was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not my favorite uh, implementation of general MIDI. Uh, but, you know, it worked. Uh, I had zero, zero problems with this machine. Um, there was just no hang-ups. I just put everything together and ran it, and it just worked. Uh, no issues. The games always detected the sound just fine and, and, and everything, just no issues. So as far as that goes, uh, that part was a breeze. Uh, with these old computers, sometimes you hit a lot of like hang-ups or maybe get some games that will conflict with the sound or something. No issues whatsoever. Uh, it was a, a pleasure to work with uh, this motherboard. Um, so that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe, and uh, let us know what you think in the comment section. And thank you guys again. See you in the next video.